Okay, we're starting the recording. Welcome everyone to the ASCE webinar in our LRD faculty webinar series. Today, we're gonna to hear from Alan and he's gonna walk us through this wonderful resource. As a reminder for attending this live session today, you will receive a certificate of attendance and all registrants will get access to the um, recording of this video once it is available online and it will be posted on our YouTube page for you to review whenever you want. At the end, we will have time for Q&A, so I'm going to leave everyone muted until then, but please feel free to drop your questions in the chat as we go, and I can always ask Alan if something needs to be asked in the moment. Alan is gonna do a presentation on PowerPoint and then do a live demo for us. Um, so I am going to show you where you can access ASCE. <laughs> um, that's a lot of letters to say very quickly. So this is the UDC library homepage. And just like all of our databases, it is available for you on our A to Z resource list, which is available here under our main search bar. When you click on that, you are taken to the list and everything here is alphabetical. So you just scroll down to the ASCE research library. When you click on that, you will be prompted to log in using your UDC email and password. So now I'm gonna stop my screen share and hand it over to Alan. So thanks for your patience. I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing the right screen. Do you see a PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Alan Dillman. I am the senior manager in the publications department. Uh, and uh, I've been working at ASCE in their publications division for a little more than seven years. And I look forward today to talking with you about the ASCE library and what it is, an overview, um, what content is there, what resources, what um, tools there are for you. Let me also, um, before I forget to thank you, I appreciate you uh, taking an hour out of your day to, to listen to this presentation and uh, look forward to hearing your feedback and questions afterwards. And as Megan said, please do put questions into the chat. Um, uh, sometimes that makes it more, um, relevant if you're asking the question while I'm talking about something that you're interested in instead of waiting to the very end. So I'll look forward to, to any questions you have um, and we'll, we'll go from there. So I have a very brief PowerPoint, uh, very brief um, presentation to show you in that way. And then I'll go to the website to do a demo. Uh, it's, unlike, it's unlikely that it's going to take an hour uh, but um, if we start to run out of time, uh, I'll just make sure that I hit all the most important points of ASCE. So let me begin the PowerPoint. And thank you again, Megan, for UDC hosting this event. Uh, it's really nice to, to talk to librarians and uh, professors and students who are interested in ASC Library, and uh, uh, we appreciate it. So ASC Library, that is, um, you see here at the bottom right-hand corner, I'm hoping you can see it, that it's not blocked by any, um, by any other uh, content that's on, that's on, the, um, on the screen. Uh, to get there, uh, Megan showed you how to get the, to the site through your UDC Library site, but if by chance you're at home or traveling or something and you're not using the UDC site, it's just simply ASCELibrary.org. So um, Megan, are, are you, if you don't mind unmuting for just a second, just to make sure I'm focused on the right um, angle of, are there students and faculty or mostly faculty? It's faculty and librarians. Super, super, thank you. Okay, so very briefly, this is kind of a standard um, thing that ASCE likes to have done. It's just, who are we? You probably know who we are. We're the American Society of Civil Engineers. We're a nonprofit society with a um, publications division. And you see that we have over 150,000 members worldwide. 
and uh, we were founded back in 1852. And I'll bring that up, the, the history of it, a little bit later, uh, because recently we rolled out our archives, our content from back from 1872 up till uh, 1982. So that's who we are. And then, uh, as I mentioned, this is what I'm talking about is ASCELibrary.org. What is it? It's basically our platform for all our content. Everything is here at this site, our journals, our proceedings, our eBooks and standards, as well as the, as I mentioned, the new archives and civil engineering, civil engineering magazine. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, um, and I don't want to just read what's on the screen, but sometimes I can't get around it. It represents about 150,000 technical articles um, from the industry. So what's in it besides the journals, the proceedings, the et cetera, um, what I like to do just in case um, is bring out or talk a little bit about civil engineering. Uh, probably, or maybe some of you have an idea of what you think civil engineering is, um, as I did before I started at ASCE, um, structures, buildings, bridges, dams, roadways, um, that kind of thing. But you'll see from here, from these subject areas, that we're a lot more than that. Uh, all related to civil engineering, um, but there's certain areas, just in case that you wouldn't have thought to go to the ASCE library to look for this content, you, uh, you'll see that you should. Uh, everything from aerospace, uh, and I could read all these topics, but uh, what's most interesting to me is like there's sustainability, there's sus uh, sustainable water, urban planning, uh, waterways and ports. There's quite a bit of information about energy, pipelines, or, um, petroleum industry, uh, natural hazards, hazards waste, and, and so forth. Um, computing too. Computing has turned to be turned out to be a pretty big area uh, in, in our um, on our platform for our content. So in any case, um, I bring this out because maybe it's not just the students or faculty from engineering or civil engineering that would be interested in ASCE library content, but perhaps other areas, environmental science, uh, architecture, and so forth. As I mentioned, journals are they're the major part of our uh, website, uh, our platform. We have 35 journals, um, and this is where you'll find the peer-reviewed content of, of ASCE uh, library. And a nice part of, of this, uh, of a current subscription, which your library has, a current subscription to all the titles, is that it includes content from 1983 uh, to the present. So as you see, it's a 38 um, year archive of, of content. Uh, as I mentioned uh, a minute ago, we, we just this month have digitized and put on the platform our earlier content and that's a different subscription or actually a different purchase but i'll bring that up later but in any case a current subscription includes almost four decades of, of content we also have um quite a quite a number of proceedings proceedings are these um, papers from conferences from events technical papers from these these events these are not necessarily peer-reviewed but they seem, um, when we look at usage, it, um, just from my perspective, from the publishing side, I'm always surprised that it makes up quite a bit of um, usage, anywhere from 10 to 20% of what a university um, um, views and downloads. So if you're looking for uh, doing research, and um, please don't dismiss this content, it might be something that could be valuable and helpful for your for your your research, your projects, and so forth. So proceedings, um, it's more than 600 titles, and your library subscribes to all of them. You have access to everything. It's a 21-year archive, uh, proceeding proceedings from the year 2000 up to the present year. 
We also have um, a collection of ebooks and standards. There's now it's almost 500. When this present when this PowerPoint was made, there was 470, but this it's almost 500 now. At this time, your library doesn't have uh, access to it. I don't want to dwell too much on it, but it's uh, we have a collection of the ebooks and standards. It includes about 90 standards titles um, that are part of it. The nice thing about the ebooks, if your library ever gets interested or your campus wants to, you can either subscribe or purchase them, is there's no restrictive DRM, meaning you can download the whole ebook on your own device. Um, and it's there. It's not going to disappear or uh, go away or what have you. And it's um, unlimited use. Just like our journals and proceedings, it's unlimited simultaneous use. There's no um, limit. We also have the Civil Engineering Magazine Archive. That is our flagship magazine for subscribers. We also offer it to, to library institutions. I don't believe your library subscribes to it, but this is relatively new. It's a, a lower cost subscription. It's, um, please don't misinterpret me. I'm not trying to make this a sales thing. I just wanted to tell you so you're aware of it. Um, it's, um, it's relatively new that we're offering this. And this year specifically is the first year we're offering it without any kind of embargo, meaning we're not holding back a year <clears throat> before we uh, release the content. So if you subscribe to the Civil Engineering Magazine Archive, you get everything that exists from 2005 to, to today, the present. As I mentioned, um, and you'll see from the slide, if you, it doesn't really fit the format that I had in the earlier presentation, I dropped this in. Um, I kind of borrowed it from one of the people in marketing. Um, as I mentioned, March 1st, we launched our ASCE Legacy Journals Archive. And this is the uh, archive of all the content that doesn't, that's not included in the current subscription. Uh, in other words, it's a more than 120 year archive and uh, as um, I hate to do this, I'm reading off the screen, which you could do as well, um, 50,000 technical papers. Um, in any case, this is the historical, um, all the historical articles, documents from, um, from the ASCE that we finally, this has been a project we've worked on for years and years, uh, finally got it digitized. Um, it's not ideal to be rolling this out during the pandemic, but uh, it's ready now. And um, I bring this up because when you do a search on the ASCE library, you may, you will, you will likely have results that are for, that represent content before 1983, let's say 1980, or let's say 1976, there's an article. Uh, it'll show up in the results. You're not going to be able to open it because the library doesn't, hasn't bought it yet. Um, but we'll propose that to the libraries. And uh, again, I don't want to make this a sales thing. I'm just making you aware of that's sometimes frustrating when you're trying to access something that's you can't open or can't download. And that just may be the case. As I mentioned, this is very new that we that we rolled this out. And um, so that's where you'll see the um, that's like as I mentioned, you'll see results from that. Uh, what's also interesting is it's a complete history of the US infrastructure, bridges and roads and highways. And that's fascinating, as well as just the information, like as you see here, the, the um, bridges, um, there's the information about the Brooklyn Bridge is amazing. Um, it's all older material, of course, not that civil engineering really gets dated, um, but in any case, it's fascinating from a historical perspective. So that's our archive. Um, also, all of this is on the same platform, and when I do the demo and show you um, search and results, you'll more than likely see uh, content from all those segments, all those types of content, journals, proceedings, ebooks, standards, uh, the magazine, as well as the archive. So at this time, I'm going to switch it over, and hopefully I can do this um, properly, to um, to do a demo of the ASCE library site. I haven't um, seen any questions and maybe that's good that I'm being thorough, but please do pass on any questions as I mentioned 
um, if you want to in the chat or you know hold them till the end. That's no problem. So let me see here. One of the most important things that I wanted to tell you today is that um, it's really helpful for a user. Here's the ASCE library website. It's really helpful for a user. I'm going to move this around here to have to register on the ASCE library site. It's a free registration. Um, no cost. What you, the benefits are and the features of that are, there's, there's a lot of them. There's for everything from saving the content to saving your searches to saving favorite articles or content um, to set up alerts to be aware of when new content's available. Um, I highly recommend um, registering uh, on the uh, ASCE library site here. And you'll see this on the upper right hand side and I'm trying to circle it with my cursor. Um, so where it says log in and register. And so don't worry about find my institution. You're probably under the IP ranges either through a VPN or, or you're at on campus. So to log in, it's pretty simple. You click the login register. And it asks you your username and password. So if you've never done this before, uh, you go to the very bottom where it says create a new account. So create a new account and you click on that and there's just basic information, your email address, and it sets it up. Um, I just, I point this out that it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty um, easy to do. And so um, you just do that and you continue and you can set it up. And what I'm gonna do now is flip over to my own registration, you see here, once you register, your name will pop up. And so I'm already registered, of course, and um, here you see my name. And just briefly before I get into showing you um, searches and some of the content is I'm just, again, um, it's just really helpful uh, to register. And You'll see things, as I mentioned, your favorites, for example, maybe favorite articles. So I'm clicking on that. I'm trying to remember what, oh yeah, here's some of the articles I've saved. Um, and so in this way, I imagine ASC is not unique. You probably have used other um, publishers' um, websites and they have similar features. I'm just gonna walk through this and, and I'm walking through as if you, haven't ever seen this ever before. So my apologies if it seems simple or you know very basic the way I'm showing this. But in any case, for me, this is really helpful that I don't, I don't have to keep going back and finding this article that I'm interested in. It's a favorite, I saved it as a favorite, and I'll show you how to save it as a favorite once you're registered on the site. So here are some of the favorite art articles. So other features that are helpful are the alerts. Uh, in this way, just like probably other publishers you've encountered, you can be alerted by email when there's new content, either in our books, our proceedings, our standards, our journals. Um, for example, I, I set up alerts for a couple of journals, the Journal of Bridge Engineering, uh, Computing and Civil Engineering, and a couple others, Geotechnical. Um, you can set up these alerts to come um, never, if you really don't want them, which seems silly, um, daily, weekly or monthly. I do weekly and my, um, for the most part, I get all these uh, alerts on a Saturday, just so you know, that's just the schedule. If you want them earlier, get, you can do it daily. <clears throat> you can always come back to your profile and change your alerts. If you uh, are not, you know, if you want to change what content you're getting uh, and you can change how the frequency of it. So that is the alert feature. Save searches is another helpful thing is, okay, I, I did that search. I can't remember what terms I use, what wording. Um, these, these are, um, you can save your searches and I'll show you how to do that when we're in that, that part. So that, that's the main thing um, that I wanted to show you that just the value of having a registration, again, there's no cost to it. 
on the site. And especially for students, I think it's helpful that say they're graduating, uh, maybe they go on to grad school or they don't, but in any case, they always will have this um, at their fingertips and not have to start from scratch when they um, you know, have, have moved on. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the ASCE library main site. Um, this is the, the landing site. And you see it's a pretty basic page. There's nothing too splashy or whatever. Um, it's just, you can start out going to the journals, the books, the proceedings or the standards. As I mentioned, um, your, your campus has subscribes to all the journals and all the proceedings. And this is a quick way to just go to them. Uh, if you know where you're going, if you know which title and exactly where, if not, more than likely you're going to be doing a search. And you can search um, up here at the top, and I'm circling with my cursor, hope you see it, or you can just put it here in this search area um, and go from there. I'm just going to do a random um, search. I, I like to, um, I'm interested in trenchless. Um, so I always search that. And so you see when I do the search, I put in the word I put that I'm searching for the, the term. And as you can imagine, just like say a Google search, there's just so many results that it's almost unusable. So you can either narrow the search in our, um, sorry for moving that around so quickly. Um, you can narrow it in the advanced search area or here on the left hand side, if you kind of know what you're looking for, maybe you know for sure it's a journal or a technical paper or proceedings, you can narrow your search here. Um, sometimes you don't know. Um, if, you knew, if you know an author, that, that makes it even easier because you'll see all the auth authors of uh, trenchless content here. I'm gonna click more. And so you see, oh, okay, here, here's, um, um, John Matthews, that's the article and one of the articles I'm looking for. If you don't know, just leave that. Um, again, if you know specifically which journal it's in, you might be able to narrow your search. If you know the publication date and you can move this, this bar here, um, let's say you really only want the most recent content. So you see how that suddenly by changing that, that setting to just 2020 and 2021, it narrowed it from narrowed the results from more than 2000 articles um, to 89. So we can do further narrowing, um, you know, to filter and um, you can say, okay, I'm only interested in trenchless, you know, projects or research in the US in the United States or Canada. Sometimes there'll be other countries, of course, uh, in this case, there isn't, as well as technical topics you can narrow. So if we just do the US, Suddenly we've narrowed it to 16 and that's a manageable amount of articles to kind of flip through here. Um, <clears throat> and you see the first result here is four trenchless water main installation installations under an active railroad in South Florida. That's from pipelines 2020. I'm pretty sure that's a proceedings. Um, and you can see I have access to it. It says free and you will see that if it's a journal of proceedings um, for you. Framework for life cycle cost analysis. Again, that's a, another proceedings, another proceedings. So these are a lot of proceedings. And then we have a, a result from a journal, the Journal of Pipeline Systems Engineering and Practice. Um, and I'm just gonna click on this one um, just because it's a journal and that um, will give me um, an ability to show you some other features. So you click on the article, you're like, oh yeah, this is the one I wanted. And you see some basic information here, the abstract. Uh, of the article, the authors, um, you see how many times it's downloaded. That's just kind of interesting sometimes. Um, you can immediately view the full text as um, just here online, not as a PDF. Um, so I just clicked that. And so you're gonna see as a full text here on the website and see the introduction and then you can scroll down. I'm not gonna scroll through the whole thing. I'm gonna try to go back to the top. Um, and maybe that's helpful. You're like, oh yeah, that's what I want. I want to download that. So you go over here to your tool to download. And that's when you start to see the PDF version that looks just like, just like the printed version. Um, and 
Some helpful features, you, you may have seen this from other publishers. We have it too, it's check for updates. So this is a relatively new article, it came out in 2020. Uh, but just in case there's any updates or um, anything that's relevant that might have happened or uh, since it was published, I click on it and it says, okay, this document's current. So that's fine. It's, there's no updates from the author or from the publisher about it. So I go back to it. Um, more than likely, if, you're, um, if you went in on, through the UDC library website and under the IP ranges of, uh, of your campus, you're going to see here on the left side uh, a watermark that'll say, you know, downloaded from the ASCELibrary.org by the UDC library. And for me, it just says my name. Um, so again, you you see the article just as it's in its printed form. I'm going to go back. And um, what's helpful is there's other tools aside from just uh, downloading the PDF version. You can uh, download the citation. And here's where if you set up a registration, you can add this article. You're like, ah, great. This is the article. I don't want to have to keep looking for it. I'm going to add it as a favorite. So I'm going to click on that. And right now it's it's added to my favorite. I'm going to scroll. It automatically went to the, my registration, my profile. And I go to the very bottom and here it is. Here's the article um, saved. So then it's like, oh, okay, great. I don't have to keep going after that, um, looking for that. And so I, I think that was it. But anyway, I'm back to another article. Um, uh, other tools that exist are you can, uh, for permissions, that's kind of a rare thing you're going to need, um, but just in case it's there, and you can track the citations. So that's all very helpful. I'm using Firefox right now. So when I hit the share, it doesn't for some reason, there's like a glitch here, but if you're using Chrome or Internet Explorer, you're, there's a share capability here, and I don't know why this is glitchy, um, but um, you can share it by email or uh, other ways. So there is a share feature, and my apologies. Um, um, for some reason, that just doesn't show up. In any case, it's there. So other nice, um, helpful, uh, features here on this page that shows the article are the details. And you see the authors and their affiliations, when it was received, when it was accepted, and so forth. You can also kind of as a quick way to look at any kind of figures or graphs or photos is hit figures. And then you see them here on the right hand column. I don't want to scroll too fast, but because when you're not used to it, it's not easy on the eyes. References are also here. So you'll see those. And then um, a nice feature in so my, let me move the, the Zoom box, uh, related. Here you'll see, uh, this is sometimes helpful, uh, related. It's, it's an automated feature. Um, for me, to be honest, it's not that helpful, but for some it might be helpful to, you can see related content here. Um, that's just an algorithm that searches for articles that are similar. So there you go. That is the search um, mechanism. But let me go back and show you um, an advanced search that um, might help. I, I mean, when I when I did the search, I filtered it myself based on the years of content that I wanted and the type of content, but you may not know that for sure. So here's, um, here's the advanced search where you can put in a topic or a term and you can look for that content either anywhere in the article as part of the title or as the author. Um, so that's um, one way to do it as well. And um, in any case, um, as I mentioned, that's just another way to to go about it. And this is a little bit of explanation here without me uh, here on the left side to do a quick search. Here are some tips and then um, more advanced tips of um, for you to find the content that you're interested in. And then how we, you know, the kind of search queries that we 
the, the tools that we use on our platform. So you see, I can, this is probably search um, tips that you use for other sites, but just to reinforce that we, we have the same um, type of um, filters and capability. So that's the main, um, that's really the, the key things I wanted to present. Um, before I move completely away though from the website is um, I wanted to make sure you're aware of um, if, um, if you wanted to submit any, uh, do a submission. So at the, let me go back to the main site first. So here's the main site. As I mentioned, the, the article, the journals, proceedings, books, standards, et cetera. But if you're interested in submitting an article, you go here under, under author services. So for example, you have uh, prepared um, a manuscript for an article and you just simply push, uh, click on journal articles and you can go through here. Um, there's a little bit of COVID-19 information, but if you scroll down, it'll take you step-by-step step <clears throat> the way to um, submit an article for publication with ASCE. For example, uh, it's got a handy um, chart here or you know timeline, prepare, submit, review, then promote. And you know, select the, the appropriate journal for it, and then how to prepare it, and then how to submit it. Um, with um, manuscript requirements here, et cetera. It's all here under the author uh, services. And um, again, I, I hesitate to, to just read what you can see yourself, but in any case, just know where to get to it. Similar for book, for books. For a book author, same thing. You'll see the guide here of, um, how to submit it and then um, relevant forms and, and so forth to, uh, to do that. And then there's an editors and reviewer site as well under author services and, uh, and awards um, that we have. We also have a useful site for librarians and that's under the user services. So you user services and then uh, drop down to librarians. And here's kind of just a quick way to find um, information, either news or um, mark records or the full list of titles. You can find that here on this under the KBART mark in Excel. Um, perhaps usage statistics, usage reports, uh, licensing, and then costs for things, and then archive policy. So you'll find a lot of that information right here um, in this handy librarian site. I'll scroll down to show all the um, features there. So that's, um, for example, um, there's a librarian toolkit. We're kind of still building this out. This is to help the librarians to promote ASCE in their library. We have a quick start guide that is a nice PDF. That just is a very simple guide to using the ASCE library site. And you see this, uh, I just clicked on it. It's a, a PDF download. Um, it's helpful maybe for someone who is less familiar with um, websites, uh, with uh, publisher websites. Uh, and you see here, just this is pretty much everything that I went through um, earlier. And you'll just, in any case, it's, we are trans, going to translate this into a number of languages. We have one, we have versions translated, but it's our old website. Um, but it's, we're looking forward to offering in the near future, a Chinese version, a French version, Spanish version, and so forth. That may help for international students. So that's our quick start guide. And then we have um, easy downloads for, uh, library signs uh, that you could post that just highlight um, ASC content for um, for students and faculty coming into the library. So there's the posters, another poster here that just shows our content and so forth. And we have a, a nice video um, doing save searches. 
And I hesitate to click on it because it'll start right away. So in any case, you'll see it there. And um, so um, Megan, that really is the the line. That's the the meat of what I wanted to 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 present today in demo. And I'm open to questions or clarifications or if I skipped over something too quickly and someone wants me to go back, please let me know and I'm glad to do it. So since we are now at the end of the demo, if anyone has any questions, either put them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself. I am going to drop a feedback form into the chat right now and we'd love to get feedback from you since this is a new series of events we're offering. Um, thank you, Alan, for that wonderful walkthrough. I know, um, you know, we're trying to highlight all of the services and resources available for our faculty and staff, particularly now that we are uh, doing remote teaching. Um, so thank you for that wonderful demo. You're very welcome. And again, thank you and, and those taking time out to, to attend. I, I appreciate it. And um, the very first slide of the PowerPoint had my email, but um, you can always contact Megan and she can contact me if you have any more specific um, questions or something that might be tripping you up on the website. I'm always glad to help. Well, as a reminder, everyone, thank you for attending today. You will receive a certificate of attendance for attending live and the recording will be sent to you and available on our YouTube soon. I'm going to end the recording in a minute just in case anyone would like to ask any questions not recorded.